Some kids and parents say they don't get math, but when you see how it mixes into everyday life, math is easier to understand. As a math education researcher, Marlene Kleiman did exactly that with her kids, and now she's going to show us how we can do the same. I'm one of those parents that was never good at math as a child, and so I worry, am I gonna have enough math to help my kids. Well, you're in great company. A lot of parents feel really uncomfortable with math. They lack confidence, yet they do have everyday life math skills. They measure, they estimate, they figure out what time to leave the house to get somewhere on time, and they can squeeze their car into a tiny little parking space. What we try to do on the Mixing in Math team is to help parents see where they do math in everyday lives, how it fits into what they love doing with their kids anyway, and to bring out that math and share it with their children. If you're a family that loves to play games, include some math types of games. If you're a family who loves to cook, ask some math questions while you're working with your kids. If you're in the car all the time, there are some great kinds of questions, things you can do, ways to keep the kids quiet in the back seat when you're driving. So what we've done over the years is develop a bank of about 200 activities. You don't have to do them exactly as is. They're really kind of conversation starters. Now who has access to the website or how do you get access to the it's website? It's available for public. Our work on the, on the website was largely funded by the National Science Foundation and they're in English and Spanish. And it's free? It's absolutely free. You can download anything. That's wonderful. So let's talk about some of the activities. Sure. A lot of families will have a penny jar. So you get a clear jar and you talk to the kids, get them to do some predictions. Prediction is a great way of bringing math and get them thinking, how long will it take to fill this up? A month, a year, 10 years, a day? You know, how much change do we put in? $10, will that be halfway full? Or will that be a whole way full? I would love it if you'd make a guess. And then periodically, dump out all the change and have them count. Here we go. This is a great way to get kids of all ages involved. So if you have preschoolers or kindergartners who are just kind of learning what the different coin values are, have them sort them. You can even have them do some counting. So let's make piles of 10. There's a great time for observations like, whoa, the dimes are smaller. <laughs> and how heavy they are, and those are all important math concepts. Older kids can be counting, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20. Uh, they may not be able to write down the total in dollars yet, but they can think about um, how to count. Even older kids can be multiplying or working with change. Check this out. When my kids were little, <laughs> we almost never bought blocks or, or toys to build with. Instead, I saved everything. I would say yogurt containers, toilet paper rolls, boxes of all kinds for my kids to build with. What can you do with that? If you have boxes of different types, say cereal boxes, tissue boxes, ask kids if they can build a tower as high as they are. And this is great for kids of different ages. For an older one, if you want to sneak in an extra challenge, build a tower as high as you are with the fewest possible boxes. So what they're going to have to think about is how do I orient the box so that the tower is stable, but that the long side makes my tower high. Diana, when you play this game with Lily, what is your goal? I want her to think about uh, what different characteristics of shapes would make the best building blocks. What box would we do next? In school, often you're going to be, you know, you might be measuring angles or solving problems involving shapes or memorizing shape names, but ask any engineer or architect and they'll tell you that kids need practice building and exploring and measuring. So share with me an activity that parents could do when they're standing in line with their children. There's a game that we made up called I Spy Shapes. You're looking for an object that's a certain shape. So if I go first, I could say, I see a triangle. And then you, or the kids, would ask yes or no questions to try to figure out which triangle it is. 11, 8, 9, 10. Okay. Another situation that will come up in everyday life is the idea of time to share snack or to share some other type of food. Do you have activities for that? So we have one that we use especially for food. It's called Fair Shares. Whenever you're serving snack or serving some coveted food item with your kids, put out all the items, 
say it's um, pieces of an apple and ask how many could everyone get? You're right, we'd each get three. Do you agree? I love that activity because children always think everything will always be even. And the idea that there will be remainders, there may be something left over, Absolutely. is a great concept to be able to introduce at home because it's certainly mm -hmm. gonna come up at school. I also noticed that when you look at the activities, there really is that sense of a cooperative, collaborative side. Why is that so important for kids? There are such important social and emotional goals we have for our kids as parents, and we want to, we want to draw that through and to show that math doesn't need to be divorced and isolated where you know, you're doing the worksheets and finding out who's the best. In life, cooperation is very, very important, so we want to pr promote that. As you're talking, two things hit me immediately. One, it doesn't sound like I need any special equipment or materials in order to do this. No, not at all. Just what's around your house. And two, all we ever hear about is our kids need to do more critical thinking. Marlene, everything you've talked about has been critical thinking Absolutely. for young kids all the way up through... All ages. Uh, yeah. And it's fun. A lot of times people think that to make math fun, what they need is to sugarcoat it. We say, we're not trying to make math fun, this unfun thing, fun. We're trying to show that there's a lot of math in the things that you already find fun. Marlene, this has been wonderful. I want to thank you so much for all your incredible ideas. Thank you. Want to add math to your everyday life? Check out some of Marlene's ideas by going to our activities section now.